Yeah, we're really excited. It's a, uh, you know, it's um, we opened up a block of 1,500 tickets today. It was kind of our last big block, and and uh, we saved just a few, some walk-up tickets, but and they were gone in 90 minutes, which is really cool. Like it's really cool, and I just think it speaks to. Uh, how fun this game is for this valley, right? It's just fun. And, um, and uh, you know, I think there's gonna be great juice in the gym. It's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be a really special gym because there's gonna be, you know, as many BYU fans as there's Utah Valley fans. You don't get that in college basketball very much. You get it in tournaments, but that's not with a jam-packed gym. This is actually gonna be a sold-out gym where you have that kind of vibe. I think it's great. I think people are excited about it. We're certainly excited about it. Anytime we get a chance to play against that great team up there, it's exciting for us. And so uh, we look forward to it. What's it like for you? I mean, you've had the experience now. What's it like for you to be able to, you know, experience facing Dave and those boys? Some well, of what you know. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of my coaching friends, uh, like Coach Fox, for example, at Georgia, who's one of the great coaches. I mean, he's doing an unbelievable job there. They just beat St. Mary's the other day, right? Um, and he just hates playing against his friends, right? And I'm, I'm warped enough that I feel exactly the opposite, right? I love it. Like, uh, you know, my first year we played Southern Utah, and Nick Robinson was the head coach there, and he's one of my dear friends. And they beat us on our floor, and it was awful. And I still love them, right? And, um, and we went to BYU the first year and eight minutes in the game, we're down 22 to two. And I hated every second of that game, but I still love the opportunity to play against guys that I, that I love. I mean, especially Coach Rose. I mean, Coach Rose is such a great mentor to me and he's been such a great friend and he's such a great boss to me and uh, taught me so much. And, uh, so on a very personal level, I love it. Like, I love the fact that we get to go compete and, you know, so I enjoy it. What's it like for Isaac and Jay before you spent so much time, so much energy over there, and now I've done the same thing for you over there? You know, I think it's special to, I think it's special to all our guys. Listen, you know, we're lucky. I mean, BYU is 10 rungs above us, right? And so and we, we obviously dig it. Like, we dig going to play Duke and Kentucky, right? As painful as those losses were, I still dig the opportunity to go play great teams. And this is special for us because this is a this is the marquee team in the state, and they're the, they're also only five miles away from us, and they have unbelievable tradition, and they have the winningest head coach, and is he the winningest head coach in the history of Utah he basketball? Might. He might be in the history of Utah he basketball, right? And he's in the top ten winningest coaches in America, right? And um, and they have a great team. I mean, they're full of stars that are that are terrific players, and, and so the chance we get to go play them is awesome. It's, it's really exciting, and, and we're grateful for the opportunity, and, and we're to, you know try and try and compete, and see if we can pull off another miracle, right? I mean, that's that's fun to have those chances. Talk about the, talk about the matchup between AK and your only child. Yeah. It'll be fun for fans to watch. I don't know how much they're going to be matched up. I mean, Luke is playing the center position for them, and Luke is a handful. So what? This Luke Worthington is really impressive to me. Uh, he's done a great job. Their staff has done a great job with him because he's a real problem. He is a problem. Uh, and so, uh, you know, listen, Yoli's an important part of their team, and AK is certainly an important part of our team, and um, they're both really talented players. So it's going to be great to kind of see how this thing un unravels and, and see if, you know, who can figure things out quicker and, you know, who can kind of manage the hours better. I think that's going to probably be a, have an impact on the game. It's going to be fun to watch that. But it's matchups all up and down and around. You know, what's fun about playing in-state games is that you compete against these guys all summer long, right? You find them in random gyms. You get to play against them. And then, and then you know, you're going out to the restaurant uh, in the middle of summer and you, lo and behold, you're, you're sitting at a table next to, you know, those guys over there. And, and uh, so it's fun. It's, 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 it's a you know, backyard brawl and it's pretty cool. Are those intake games that much more important when you talk about, and then we talked to you a bunch about building a program yep. and really building up the program. Is it important to be able to play teams that are you know, locally, regionally? Viable? I don't know how important it is. I just don't know why everyone won't want to do it, right? Especially in our state. I mean, you guys have heard me say this, beat this drum over and over again. It doesn't affect anybody, right? I mean, none of us are in the same conference. 
Uh, and so it's it's hugely important because of bragging rights, right? Like in state games, especially when you're not in the same conference, they're like the one lone vestige remaining sport where you just get to try and beat someone just because you want to beat them, right? And and then you know that you get to brag about it for the next year if you win, and if you lose, you know you have to live with getting shade thrown on you for the next year, right? And that's just like that's. I mean, in its purest sense, this is like the most fun part of sport, right? And so, uh, I think that's how we feel about these games, and we're really grateful. You know, BYU's been a great, uh, they've been really, really, you know, a lot of pundits who say, well, BYU shouldn't play UV because it's a lose-lose. Well, you know, I mean, if that, that's how the world is starting to approach athletics, and I think it's sad, right? Because I think the way we should approach that is like, we want to go beat everybody that's that's around here trying to claim anything, right? That's the way it should be. But now there's just so much money in it, and guys are getting fired, and all this kind of stuff. You, you kind of lose that, and, and so I'm grateful for this series because because it's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. You know, when was the last time uh, the Utah Valley sold 1,500 tickets in an hour and a half to anything, right? And that's just because people in Utah Valley want to come see this game. I would want to see it too. Like, I, if I could remove myself from being the coach, I'd be like, I want to go see that game. I want to go be in that gym where there's going to be 4,000 BYU fans and 4,000 UTU fans, and they're going to be equally as vocal, and it's going to be a riot, right? And we wouldn't want to be there for that. It's going to be fun. How does hosting the game this year change the dynamics? Well, uh, so it changed in a lot of ways. Like I spent the last, you know, I spent the last two months trying to figure out how to um, build a fire code reliable stand so that we could actually have this game on national television, right? So there's the logistics. Of, I coach, I text Coach Rose this morning. I'm like, hey, can I help you and Cheryl with parking? Like, does Cheryl need some parking here, right? I mean, so just hosting it is fun. But it's exciting for us to have it on our campus, right? I mean, that's really exciting. And, and for us to have a great opponent coming to our gym, that's really hard for us to do. Not because people are scared of us, but because people are like, why would we go play there, right? And um, hopefully we're hopefully we're making, making up some ground and changing that. But it doesn't matter who we bring in here. It doesn't matter if we brought Duke or Kentucky into our gym. This game is more fun because it's our brother. You know, it calls a little brother or whatever. Like this is our our companion five miles down the road, and that's like the best stuff. It's fun, and and it's best because I'm terrified of the game, right? Like we're all twisted up about what's going to happen, and that's when you know you you, you got something to do. At the end of the day, it's still a basketball game. What do you guys got to do to win? Well, we got to do the things that we do well. Well, you know, we've been rebounding the ball really well, and then we we weren't great in North Dakota. We, we actually came up even on the glass, and that's not. We've prided ourselves in being a relatively dominant rebounding team. We have to do that better. We have to we have to find some way to execute offensively better and get some pace in the game. You know, we're not even close to where we can be and where we will be when we get there in the season. I've actually been really pleased with our with our uh, shell defensive concepts. Our guys are actually incorporating that pretty well. Um, but but this is a new animal. I mean you think about it, you got five guys on the floor pretty much at all times that are big time lead scorers. So that makes it at BYU. So that makes our job more complicated. We gotta find a way to manage that. And we have to manage the emotion of the game, right? Um, you know, like as much as we love these games, one of the dangers is you get so excited about playing in state opponents that you maybe don't play the way you, you play. So we have to find a way to just be who we are. Uh, all the same challenges, right? But, but just more fun. Coach, uh, through these first games, what would your assessment be of how Jake's been able to come in and contribute for you guys? Well, Jake's numbers have been really good, but his leadership has been outstanding. That's been the thing that's been most exciting to me is, you know, Jake can actually help our team win a game without scoring a bucket, right? Uh, he's just really taking a leadership role on our team. He's an energy guy. One of the things we talk about is the ebb and flow of energy during a game. 
Uh, like in North Dakota, there were three or four times where the energy could have left the building for us because we weren't playing well. We were making mistakes. We weren't executing. We weren't getting things done. We missed some shots. And in all those times where the energy seems to go away, more often than not, Jake's the guy that comes and saves us. That'll grab the guys and like help them refocus and be like, hey, you know, we're here. Like, let's remember what we're trying to do and what we're trying to get done. And let's get some positive juice back on this floor. And he's been sensational that way. He's been a huge, just a huge part of, of what we're trying to get done. Right. It's not the same question about Isaac. As long as we're talking about him. Yeah, you know, uh, I think about Isaac. So, you know, Isaac played uh, six straight extraordinary halves of basketball for us. And then, um, and then he had a, no, no, he was at eight. Was he eight? UC Davis would have been our fourth game. Then UC Davis, he finally had a half where I was like, man, what is wrong with you? Right? Well, there was nothing wrong. It was just he set the bar so high for him being effective. If you, if you looked at the box score from the first half of North Dakota, on the road playing against a conference championship defending team, you know, we were totally sideways. Isaac has 10 rebounds in the first half and just saved us. Right? His play has been so mature and so steady and making things so simple. He's been playing like a fan, right? And I'm really proud of him. He's been playing like a big time back for us. And there's a lot of ways we can go sideways. We have a lot of ways on our team, but our roster we go sideways and he's really a steady